founder Paul Williams, ASCAP president and chairman, as well as being one of the most acclaimed songwriters in the US and a member of the Songwriters Hall of Fame. So hi, Paul, and it's uh, really great to have you here. It's good to be here. Thank you. Great. So first of all, I wanted to, to uh, talk about when you started out as a songwriter, you know, how important was it uh, to find out about societies and about ASCAP? You know, it's amazing. You can be protected by things you don't know anything about. <laughs> it was wonderful because I was an out of work actor. I was an, I, I, I played little kids in movies, but I couldn't make a living at it. And I began to write songs for my own amusement. They began just as songs for my own amusement. All of a sudden I had, I, I met with a publisher you know, I had something recorded, and, I, and, I, and that quickly I was in the middle of the music business and didn't know anything about it. But fortunately, I had a good publisher. I'm a great believer in strong and, and, and involved publishing. Yeah. And a good publisher said, you know, you, you, you know we need to get you in, in, to, to join a, a performing rights organization. I started out with BMI for, for a few, few years and, and uh, had a first couple hits at BMI and then chose to, to move over to ASCAP. It felt like a little better fit, although I have great respect for the writers of BMI and, and some co-writers there sure. and if some songs are still there. It's incredibly important because I don't have the capacity to run around the country while I'm writing songs and listen to all the, the clubs and see who's you know who's singing my music yeah, who's performing my songs I need somebody to represent me and blanket licensing is a brilliant idea that has worked for many years yeah and you we're talking about being protected by something you didn't know anything about so uh, how, how do you feel um, uh, young artists are uh, educated uh, when it comes to, to this uh, sort of matters and are they paying attention to making sure they're registered and, and everything else they are pay they're paying attention but they're also being largely misinformed about copyright and one of the things that I that that we're trying to do at ASCAP is make sure that you know that we're very active in, in in educating young writers to where they really see the value of copyright. They see that you know that that their future, you know, really depends. And you know, if you get lucky enough to have one of those lovely little pieces of of music come out of you or a bit of a lyric that the world responds to, and you have that heart connection, yeah. because ultimately that's what it is. It's ultimately me listening to to a, a, a song by Rogers and, and Hart or or or, or the Beatles or, or uh, Stephen Stills and going, oh, he's writing about what I feel. But you, ha you have that connection, you know. You get lucky enough to make that connection where all of a sudden your music is a part of people's lives yeah. and continues, you know. I wrote We've Only Just Begun in 1970. We've Only Just Begun is still being played, thank you. Thank you very much <laughs> once in a while Goodness, yeah. and and it's it's so wonderful to know that that can become an annuity for my family that my children and my children's children you know can uh, you know can can enjoy the the fruits of my labor yeah you know, we're talking about uncertainty in, in the great keynote sp speech that you gave earlier, and so uh, uncertainty for the creators, of course, uh, because of the, of the current climate, but also the fact that you know the positive on the positive side, the fact that creators are still creating and they really want to create, and you know that's that's yeah. what makes it great. And so, talking about that, uh, you also made remarks about uh, how. Uh, you know, people are not really talking straight when it comes to uh, copyright infringement and and the issues around that. So, w what is your stance on on that front of things, and and how perhaps uh, there should be more done to protect creators uh, in this country as well? You know, the at, at at every whenever any new platform for delivering music is is created, ASCAP and and uh, you know has has had to step up to the plate and say that this is a performance. Yeah. You know, and we deserve to be properly paid for it. And we've been able to work out a, a viable working relationship with with club first with 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 you know music performed live, then in the moving into radio, television, cable, satellite. At, at every level, we've been able to find a balance that is that is probably you know a great deal is one that we both walk away from going yeah. And we're looking for that kind of a deal in the digital world right now. The real challenge right now is streaming because, you know, it, and, and I am a huge fan of, of, of the technology. I love the fact, my wife is always screaming at me, stop staring at your hand because I've always got my, you know, my face in that iPhone yeah. because everything I need to know about the world is right there. But the fact is, it, when your music, you know, when when your films, you know, when when the entertainment of, of your life is provided in a streaming fashion like that, unless the creators of that of that entertainment are properly paid, the 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 desire or the ability to continue to working, uh, making music, making movies is going to disappear. 
and and it ultimately writing songs you know is is going to become a hobby as opposed to a profession bill withers had the you know the wonderful songwriter bill withers was in washington dc with 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 me we were visiting a senator talking about about copyright and bill withers had one of the great lines of all times he said you know senator you know if if we can't make a decent living you know from from our, our music online we're going to have to do something else for you. We're going to have to get day jobs. And Senator, you do not want Ozzy Osbourne as your plumber. You know, <laughs> so the, it's. I think that's a bumper sticker. And I think that's what we have to do is when you think about the young, young music creator, the young songwriter, or composer that's beginning their career right now. For them to have a life, and for them to be able to to to, to devote their life to making music. We're going to have to adjust the the way the uh, the way that we are paid and the amount that we are paid. Yeah, yeah sure. It's fair. Absolutely, yeah. it's fair. And uh, talking about uh, the other great relationship that the songwriters have, uh, you know, in their lives, which is you know, on the one side the, pu the publishers and, and the other side the collection society. So, uh, as far as pub as publishing, you know, how how do you see the industry uh, shifting and uh, adapting to the new technology as well? Well, I'm a, as I said, I think at the beginning of, the, of our, our talk that I'm a great fan of great publishing. You know, yes. we I sit at, at as president and chairman of the board of ASCAP. I sit before a board that is that equally divided of publishers and writers. The passionate uh, involvement in the world of, of of copyright and protecting rights is is a challenge that's equally met by publishers and and by writers at this point. I think that. That publishing is is for for many of us is something that we as writers we start out as strictly writers we you know as the years passed I became more and more actively involved in my own publishing, but you know I not only got the business you know the the the, the business rewards from having a good publisher. But I also got the creative rewards. I had a, a publisher named Chuck K who would say to me, you know, let's say that's a, a beginnings of a great song, but it's not done. That second verse needs work. Uh, I love that. I love the involvement of a, of a good publisher in that fashion at all. I think that that the world is uh, the, our our world, our our business world, is offering some really interesting challenges right now. And and the larger your team, may be the better. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And looking at. Uh the relationship between uh, ASCAP and uh, you know its counterparts in the U.S. and also organizations uh, around the world. Uh, do you feel like there is a, a cohesive sort of uh, uh, coming together of all these societies to make sure that all the money is pulled together and, and properly accounted for, and that and that you have a good relationship with everybody else around the world? We are. We, there is not. There's never been a moment of tension between ASCAP and any of the other. <laughs> Puros around the world. You know what? I I think that that we're entering into a time right now where more than ever you're seeing people link arms, and uh, you know there was a period when individual interests were you know were a little intense around uh, all the elements of the of the music business. I think we're at a place right now where, especially amongst the Puros of the world, we realize we have a we have common you know common challenges and common opportunities you know so sysac is 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 in fact by its very essence is about you know embracing the fact that we're in this thing together and working together to make sure that that nothing stops the music so my friends at imro and 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 uh and APRA and and SESAM uh, and around around the world, uh, there are there are uh, there are great friendships and uh, and great working relationships. You know, and the fact is, when my music is being you know my my music is being played right now in in Paris, and thank you uh, Jean Noël uh, for collecting my money and making sure that as a songwriter, uh, that will translate to guests in the car to get me over to visit my kids. Yeah, yeah, sure, and. Uh, I wanted to end by asking you about uh, your uh, collaboration with uh, Daft Punk. Uh, of course, it's a uh, it's a number one uh, hit uh, around the world. Really, like the momentum is, is built incredibly. And it, I just wanted to ask you: you know, you're, you've contributed to two of the tracks on the album, and uh, how how does it feel to be part of a mega? streaming hit which is really like one of the first uh, yeah. uh, truly global uh, streaming phenomenons as well as being of course a, a fantastic seller in terms of actual uh, albums well you know daft punk evidently became aware of me through a movie called phantom of the paradise you know which which they claim to have seen about 20 times about four years ago they played two beautiful pieces of music for me and asked me if i'd write lyrics we talked about a concept of the album and the like and then after i after i wrote the two songs they asked 
if I would sing one of them, I put a, a vocal on a track. They disappeared and returned with this stunning album. And to see the the you know the the fact that they've kind of gone back in time and forward in time at the same yeah. the same fashion. The album is really. The album's like time travel for me because it begins with this sort of Stevie Wonder esque sort of great rhythms and all from the seventies, which which inspired these great memories of that kind of music. But then you know it's you know there was a great scene at the end of Space Odyssey, where where Kier Delea sees himself as an older man, and then he becomes that older man and sees himself as an older man. That's what working on this album was like for me, in a way. Uh, we worked together at A&M Records, which is, where I, which is now Henson Studios. So I'm in a physical location where I used to write 30 years ago or 20 years ago. I'm now working with Daft Punk. I've become a, a huge fan of, of their music. And, and they've taken EDM, they've taken the electronic dance music. And I think while they haven't walked away from that, they've, they've introduced their audience to what uh, to what uh, to Giorgio Moroder to Paul Williams to some interesting music from the past they are the opposite of ages for me at age 72 to be a, a an active participant in a number one album uh, of this type is a great gift it's awesome well thank you so much for your time and I hope you have a great rest of the day I appreciate it my friend thank you